Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many are glad to be in the house of God tonight? I said, how many are glad to be in the house of God tonight? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Oh, glory to God. I feel like I'm in a room with somebody that's in expectation for a move of God. How many are, are ready tonight to see what God is about to do in Hetobokoshata? Thank you, Jesus. Hey, hey, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glo Sit down before I get in trouble. Hallelujah. Sit down for a second. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. I'm going I'm to get in trouble. <laughs> my, name ain't, my name ain't on the program. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. But we do appreciate and we honor each and every one of you for coming out tonight. Truly, it is a blessing. And I believe on, past, on behalf of Pastor Timothy Kavanaugh, the KCC family, we want to welcome everyone tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. That you come out to be a part of this wonderful conference, Mark 2020. Aren't you glad to be in the house? Amen. And we are grateful for last night and the ministry of, uh, uh, of the pastor and the man of God, the prophet of God, Pastor Bradley. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? We honor you, sir. Amen. Come on, you can do better than that. Celebrate the God in the man. Hallelujah to God. We appreciate you tonight, Lord. And so, but we thank God and we just want you to be free to worship tonight. Amen. I believe the Lord has a word for this house. I believe the Lord, the Lord has got us set up for a blessing from God. And I believe that the supernatural power of God is going to meet us tonight. How many are believing God with me? How many are in expectation for what the Lord is about to do in this room? If you are in expectation, if you came in the spirit of faith, why don't you stand to your feet and let's approach the throne of God in faith. Hey, 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 hey. Father, we thank you tonight. We worship you and we honor you, Lord, that tonight as we gather, you said where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst. And so far, we thank you that the atmosphere is set. The hearts of your people are fixed, and we're ready to receive everything that you have for us tonight. We thank you for complete liberty, that where the Spirit of God is, there is freedom. There's no hindrance. There's no restraints, God. We thank you that anything that's unlike you cannot abide in your presence. We thank you that the healer is in the room. We thank you that the deliverer is in the room. We thank you right now for breaking every chain, destroying every yoke. Through the Lord, we ask right now in the name of Jesus uh, that your servant that comes forth, uh, every word's anointed, God. Let us have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Uh, and Father, we thank you tonight that this, this service belongs to you. We say have your way tonight. We say, have your way tonight. Father, we say, not our will, but your will be done. Father, wreck this service tonight. Let somebody say that it was good to have been in the house of God, that they've been touched by the hand of God tonight. And Father, we'll give you all the glory. We'll give you all the honor. And we'll give you all the praise. And if you believe that, lift up your voice and give God a shout. Know that he is here. He's here to do all that he said. God, we give it to you. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray and we praise. And all of God's people said amen and amen. Worship.
is it you who gives me strength? Nothing is impossible through you. Blind eyes are open, strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible.
Oh, Lord, I'm going to lift you up, and I'm never going to stop. With everything I've got, I'm going to lift you up. Oh, Lord, I'm going to lift you up, and I'm never going to stop. With everything I've got, I'm going to lift you up. You said if you'd be lifted, you'd draw all men to you. You said if you'd be lifted, you'd draw all men to you. So draw me, so draw me closer. So draw me, so draw me closer to you. I'm going to lift you higher and higher. I'm going to lift you up, oh Lord, I'm going to lift you up, and I'm never going to stop, with everything I've got, I'm going to lift you up, oh Lord, I'm going to lift you up, and I'm never going to stop, with everything I've got, I'm going to lift you up. You said if you'd be lifted, you'd draw all men to you. You said if you'd be lifted, you'd draw all men to you. You said if you'd be lifted, you'd draw all men to you. You said if you'd be lifted, you'd draw all men to you. So draw me. So draw me closer. So draw me, so draw me closer to you. I'm going to lift you higher and higher. I'm going to lift you up. Oh, Lord, I'm going to lift you up. And I'm never going to stop. But with everything I've got, I'm going to lift you up. Oh, Lord, I'm going to lift you up, and I'm never going to stop. With everything I've got, I'm going to lift you up. And I'm going to lift my hands, going to lift my voice, going to lift my worship to you. And I'm going to lift my hands. And give you praise And I'm gonna lift my hands Gonna lift my voice Gonna lift my worship to you And I'm gonna lift my hands And give you praise I'm gonna lift you up Oh Lord, I'm gonna lift you up I'm never gonna stop with everything I've got. I'm gonna lift you up. Oh Lord, I'm gonna lift you up. And I'm never gonna stop with everything I've got. I'm gonna lift you up. And I'm gonna lift my hands. Gonna lift my voice. Gonna leave my worship to you, and I'm gonna leave my hands and give you praise, and I'm gonna lift my hands, gonna lift my voice, gonna leave my worship to you, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna lift my hands, gonna lift my voice, gonna lift my worship to you. I'm gonna lift my hands and give you praise. I'm gonna lift you up, 
Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's just lift up a sound of worship unto the Father for the next few minutes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no one like you, Lord. Uh, hallelujah. 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 Amen. You can be seated all over this house. We serve a great God. You're good. Thank you. Amen. It is such a delight to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's such a delight to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's such a delight to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. We are so thankful. There is nothing more precious than the assembling of the saints. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. We are thankful. So thankful. Uh, we're getting ready to move on just a little bit. And uh, we're going to taxi for a few moments. Uh, we're getting ready to corporately give. If you would like to text to give, you can text the number right there on the screen. That's always works on this television. Yes, there it is right there. 833-421-0879. If you would like to give by cash or check or whatever, they'll have something for you. There's something you should know about KCC. We're not a house of obligation. Amen. We're a house of love. We believe in the work of ministry. We believe in what it does. We believe in the power of it. And thus we give to it. Amen. 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 If we can go to the McDonald's, and I've been to the McDonald's, everybody knows, I can willingly give my money. Amen. It's going to be well. They know. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close no thing can compare you're our living hope it's your prayer And I've tasted and seen uh, of the sweetest of loves uh, where my heart becomes free uh, and my shame is undone. It's your presence, Lord. Come on, we all know what we say. Say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. We sing, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. We sing, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. The atmosphere, your glory, God, hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. We sing, Holy Spirit, you come flood this place and fill your glory, God. 
your glory, God, is for to be overcome by your presence. One last time we sing, holy. Come on, just go ahead and bless the Lord right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're our one desire. You're our one desire. You're our one desire. No one like you. 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 No one like you, no one like you, no one like you, no one like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah! It's not the time to stop. It's the time to press in. You press into his presence. You hunger and you thirst after righteousness. And then you shall be filled. It's a pressing in time right now. We're running hard after him. We want him more than the air we breathe. We need him right here. We need him right now. We need to move by his power. We need to move by his anointing. That every yoke will be destroyed. Every captive will be set free. Press in. Press in. There's no stopping. Press in and let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. that you're going to find tonight is the one you put. Because God is not going to limit anything that He wants to do for you or I. The only limit will be in us. If you decide to stop, then you decide as far as I'm going. But if you'll make your mind up that nothing is going to stop me from getting what God has ordained that rightly belongs to me, I'm pressing in, I'm pursuing, I'm running hard after the King of glory. For in Him I live, in Him I move, in Him I have my being. Press in! Press in!
The Bible says, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. So if you're hungry here tonight, we're not talking about McDonald's hungry. We're talking about you're hungry for the living God. You're hungry for the presence of the living God. You're hungry for a move of God. Then you're going to find God right here because he's all over this room. He's over here. 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 The breath of the living God is blowing right now. And he's going to blow out some things and blow in some things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, we bless his holy name. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Glory to God. One writer said, I heard the sound. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Hallelujah. And then he told him to run or to go. So I'm trying to tell somebody here tonight, you've been hearing God for a long time. And now he's saying to you, it's time for you to run. It's time for you to go. It's time for you to pursue. It's time for you to go after that thing that God has promised you and ordained that you might have. He's calling for a people that'll say, Will you run with me? Will you work with me? Will you go for me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God for the runners. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Oh, go ahead. Let her praise him. Somebody help her. Help her praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's better. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. By now, COVID-19 should have taught you that nothing is going back to normal or what we called normal. Uh, God is setting a new paradigm. Uh, God has uh, upset some things and reset other things. Uh, so we need to make our mind up that the normal of God is the new norm. Uh, and whatever God designs and whatever God desires, uh, that's what we're running hard after. Uh, we don't want church as usual. Uh, we won't, don't want the same old party. Uh, but we want a Holy Ghost breakthrough. Uh, we want a Holy Ghost tear down. Uh, we want a Holy Ghost break out. Uh, hallelujah. Make your mind up uh, that you're not going to go back to where you were. Uh, but from this night forward, uh, it's onward and upward uh, in the pursuit of God. Hallelujah. I guess if you want to sit down, you can. Yes, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We honor the Christ in this room. Hallelujah. We honor God's set man, Pastor Timothy and Haley Cavanaugh. Together they are one, and we honor them tonight. And every other minister and pastor, apostle, 
Bishop, Elder, Deacon, Saint, Friend. We honor you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But above everything, we honor him and him alone. We're so glad for what he has done in our lives. Hallelujah. We honor the Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Well, you can sit down if you can. And we're going to try this one more time. Just don't, don't set her down yet. Just hold her right there. Don't set her down. Don't set her down. Don't set her down. Hold her right there. Don't set her down. So the Lord would say unto thee, daughter of Zion, as you have picked your feet up and put them down, uh, re realize this night that I am crushing the head of the adversary uh, and I'm coming to set order in your house, order in your family, uh, and order on everything that concerns you this night. Uh, I align your body. I come and minister uh, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet uh, and I speak peace uh, and joy uh, and prosperity uh, and blessing uh, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While I was trying to get dressed to come, I was talking to the Lord about a couple things. And so, uh, I don't know this young man very well on the keyboard. I just kind of met him recently. But uh, what I do know about him is what I heard the Lord tell me while I was trying to get dressed. <laughs> and he said to tell you <laughs> that he did not bring you here for you just to remain as you were before the day you arrived. <laughs> but he has brought you here to propel you into the next dimension uh, of the anointing that's coming on your life. Uh, you are already, you've been handpicked by God uh, to serve at this season of life. Uh, and the Lord say, I increase the mantle of anointing upon thee. Uh, and I'm going to use thee mightily uh, in the days to come. Fret not thyself uh, on any wise. But know that I, the Lord God, shall break every yoke and shackle and every man opinion. I shall turn it around and don't fret because of what they say. But know it is me, thy God, that have brought you to this place. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Y'all sit down, y'all sit down. I'm trying to be done. Hallelujah. So, uh, you have to give me a signal when it's time. Uh, so, the Lord kept speaking to this, me this earlier today. This has nothing to do with what I was going to preach. But I keep hearing this word in this service the whole time. He said, propelling. So, he's saying, Shane, Kobe, and anybody else that big enough and bad enough to claim it. He said, I'm going to propel you into the next dimension of my love and my glory. And you shall embrace me and see me in a new dimension as I move on you. And as I begin to take you in realms that you've never been before. I'm going to use you for my glory. So do not limit me. Take me out of the box. And let me be free to do my bidding in your life. For it is a propelling season. What used to take a long time is a now season. Season is happening now. Don't worry about me. I know all y'all on the edge you think I'm trying to fall. I weren't trying to fall. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's propelling us tonight uh, to a new dimension in Him. Glory to God. 
First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says But ye are a chosen generation A royal priesthood And a holy nation A peculiar people That ye should show forth the praises of him Who have called you out of darkness Into his marvelous light So that's why in the midst of a pandemic and in the midst of chaos on every side, in a midst when the government looks like they don't know what they're doing, in a time when rioting and looting and hatred is running rampant in the streets, there is a people that have been called out of darkness to walk in this marvelous light. And nobody can understand why we act the way we do. But you don't know like I know where God has brought us from. You don't know how he picked us up how he turned us around and put our feet on solid ground you don't know the price hallelujah yes 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 ah, yeah. so you see he said I've called you out of darkness to walk in his light but he said I called you for a purpose and that's to show forth my praises well if you ain't doing nothing ain't nobody seeing nothing you don't come to church just to be here you come to praise God amen y'all sit down sit down sit down sit down, sit down. you there are some things in the world that look very much alike they're similar. For instance, a king snake and a coral snake look very much alike. An alligator and a crocodile look very much alike. And on an orange tree growing in your yard, it can grow sweet fruit and sour fruit on the same tree. Are you still with me? They look alike. But on each of them, there is something that distinguishes them so you can tell which one they are. In a king and a coral snake, it's a placement of the rings on them. It's the way the ring is around them that the ring is different. And when it comes to a Christian and a non-believer, the ring about us is different. Hallelujah. We might all be sitting in the same church. And we might all act like the same kind of people. But I guarantee you we're not all the same. Hallelujah. You might be sitting next to somebody that don't want to praise God. But you need to notify the people on your row. Honey, this is the party row right here. And we're going to celebrate the God of heaven. We're going to let everybody know. Hallelujah. That we've been marked by the King of glory. And we're going to bear fruit and be a witness to him. An alligator and a crocodile, the way you can tell the difference in them is by their snout and their teeth. Some of y'all, we can tell when you're not producing any fruit by your snout and your teeth. I'm not preaching that. I'm moving on. I'm just throwing it out there. You listen to it. And on the same tree that bears sweet and sour fruit, the difference is the peel and the leaves that is attached to it. So, you know, the Bible teaches us that we are to bear fruit because we've been chosen to bear fruit. And some of us is sweet and some of us are sour. And we sit under the same anointing. We hear the same preaching. But we don't allow it to change us. We don't allow it to touch us. We don't allow it to convict us or convince us. We just hold on to the same old, same old. But I want to know, is the same old doing you any good? Have you seen any fruit from it? Has it moved anything in your life lately? But when you make your mind up, I open one wide my vessel uh, to the king of glory uh, and I say have your way when a law enforcement officer is looking for somebody they'll say to you do they have any identifying marks 
Well, yeah, they got so and so and so and so. So if I got missing, my kids could say on my mother's left arm, there's a long place where she once got a cut right there. Y'all see that? So that would be an identifying mark. That means I got a cut there. And some of the marks that we carry now in our body uh, is not because of persecution from serving God. Uh, it's because of the spirit of offense. Uh, and we won't let it go. Uh, we keep holding on to it. Uh, it marks our praise. Uh, it marks our witness. Uh, it marks everything that we go to do. Uh, but God is saying tonight, uh, I want the identifying mark uh, that's on you uh, to be my spirit, uh, to be my anointing, uh, to be my glory. Another identifying thing is, Pastor Tim, would you cooperate with me right now? Would you and Haley come stand right here for a minute? And uh, Haley, you stand up here and you get down there on your knee. Yeah, just one. Now, you stand in front of me and, and you take her hand like you was going to propose to her in the mountains. I was there. I know what happened, see? So, so when a man asks a woman to be his wife, he slides a ring on her finger and it becomes the identifying mark that she belongs to somebody else. Oh, you ain't hearing me. <laughs> But I'm here to tell you, we, the bride of Christ, have been, a ring has been slid on our finger. And we have an identifying mark that says, we belong to him and him alone. Hallelujah. And the truth is, when you look at that ring, you'll say, uh-oh, she belongs to somebody else. Well, the mark that Jesus has put on me and you should be a mark to tell the world, uh-oh, they belong to him. They belong to somebody else. Thank you. The word mark in the Greek says... It's scopio and means to take aim to keep one's eye on. So if you've got an, a mark, it causes people to take notice of it. You feel it? So you see this current pandemic, uh, the world has got their eye on the church. And I wonder, can they see the mark of Christ in our lives? And are we bearing the image of Jesus Christ? Because the Bible says as we have bore the image of the earthly, we are gonna we need to bear the image of the heavenly. So, you know, you might act like your mama and your daddy. But when you got born again, you got a new daddy in the room. You got a new blood. Therefore, he's already put his mark on us. He's already asked us to be his bride. He already slid a ring on us and said, you belong to me. So why in the world are we holding back on him now? Hallelujah, hallelujah. If the day that Pastor Tim proposed to Haley, we were in the mountains of North Carolina, and it looked like an impossible Feast. Fiasco would be good. All right, go ahead. Because we look in a place that he can get out of the car. I know what's happening. She ain't got a clue. And we're looking for a place that we can get out of the car. Not me. I was sitting in the car. I wasn't getting out. <laughs> I wasn't participating in that activity. I was just going to look from afar. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't got that yet. Okay. <laughs> I was their chauffeur. I was driving them. I was keeping them sanctified. You know, there still is such a thing in the body of Christ. It's called sanctification. So when, when you bear the mark of the Lord, you are set apart from everything else going on around about you. And I know that when, when Pastor Tim walked out on that 
bridge-like thing uh, that it was kind of shaky for that moment. And, and Haley didn't have a clue what he was up to. Uh, and then a man across the other side of the bridge comes across with a dog. And, and he's having a moment trying to find the right spot that he might ask. And some of you, uh, every time you try to go forward and say yes to the Lord, uh, it's like there's always a distraction or something getting in the way uh, so that you can't actually fully surrender and say yes. Uh, but let me tell you, uh, when the dog got out of the way uh, and the man got out of the way, uh, it didn't take him long to say to her, uh, will you marry me? Uh, so I'm here to tell you, uh, when everything else... Uh, you got to learn to press your way through the trouble. Uh, press your way through the distraction. Uh, press your way through the stuff uh, that keeps stealing you uh, away from your purpose in God. Mikhail Gorbachev had an identifying mark on his forehead. Y'all know that. Everybody could know, recognize him immediately. And it caused a lot of people to make fun of him. It was a bad thing for him because he had to endure it his whole life. And we're living in a time right now when Christianity is not so popular. And because we are wearing the mark of Jesus, they've already decided that they want to find a way that they can get rid of us. But I got news for them. The Bible says of his kingdom, there will never be an end. I got news for them. He has forever. The Bible says the government rests upon his shoulders. I got news for the world. You'll never get rid of Jesus. You might get rid of us, but you'll never get rid of him for as long as the earth stands as long there's always going to be somebody say Lord have your way Lord have your way Lord just have your way God have mercy I don't know I'm okay oh I didn't know there's a clock up there thank you very much okay y'all sit down so, a lot of people try to get rid of identifying marks. Like when babies are born, sometimes they're born with what they call a birthmark. My oldest son was born with a birthmark. He had a little red strawberry right there on the tip of his nose, right there on one side. And every time I'd go out in public, they'd say, your baby's nose is bleeding. I said, no, it's not. It's just a little strawberry he was born with. And then, then we try to get rid of the stuff because we feel like it's a bad thing. We, we, we try to get rid of it because we, we get tired of it, comments being made. And some of you are trying uh, to live one way in here and be another thing out there. Uh, but I come to tell you tonight, God is looking for His people uh, that are not ashamed to bear His mark. Hallelujah, you can have all the plastic surgery you want. Huh? But if Jesus is really in your heart, you're not going to get him out. Huh? Hey, 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 hey. Uh, if he really lives in you. Uh, the very fact that you've been marked by God, God has always been marking his people. Uh, hallelujah. And I can tell you right now that when being marked by God means that he owns you. You're his possession. Uh, it means authentication. We are authentically uh, born again. <laughs> it means that we have protection. Hallelujah. That no weapon that's formed against us uh, shall be able to prosper. Uh, we have protection. Uh, greater is he that is in us uh, than he that is in the world. Uh, we have protection. Uh, we've been made to be an overcomer. Uh, we have protection. Not only that, we have security. Y'all got a security team here. Right? So that means if somebody acts kind of some kind of way that ain't kosher. Oh. That means that black thing that some of them wear in the back of their belt. Y'all know what I'm talking about. In other words, it'll pop a cap in if you didn't know what it meant. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Well, just like they come every service armed and ready. 
they are prepared in the event that something was to happen uh, but we pray God forbid that anything would happen uh, but just in case it does uh, they're already locked and loaded uh, and they're already ready uh, so why I'm saying tonight uh, if you've been marked by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, you ought to be locked and loaded uh, and you ought to be ready uh, to rise up uh, and shoot the adversary uh, and take dominion uh, you've been put here to rule uh, and take dominion hallelujah So not only do I have security, I got security in God. In my car there is a pistol. I bought it because my children said, you're too old to be on the road by yourself. I said, I ain't never been by myself. But to keep y'all from fussing about it, I'll buy one. I bought one with the crimson flow on it. Y'all know what that means? It's got the red light. And wherever that red light goes, that's where that bullet's going to go. That means... <laughs> That means uh, not only am I locked and loaded in the natural, uh, but I'm locked and loaded in the spirit. Uh, and wherever the crimson flow of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ flows, uh, my God, that's where the attack, uh, that's where the arrow is going to go. Uh, that's where the bullet is going to land. Uh, hallelujah. We're not going to hit and miss. Uh, it's a sure target. Everybody knows me, those I don't like to stay up here, right? Y'all know that about me. Oh, y'all to know me, you know I don't like this right here. I'm doing my best to submit to the authority. <laughs> and there's so many congregations in here. I'm not trying to preach to just one. I'm trying to preach to everyone. <laughs> So, Missy, I, I just want to say this while I sell my head. Will you let me say it for you? No, no you will. <laughs> the things that have created such pain for you in your heart, the things that continually beset you and upset you and continually hurt you. Tonight when I was getting ready, I saw your face. And the Lord said, tell her I'm going to propel her be past, way past that place. In other words, he said, you've cried enough over some things. And it's time to dry up your eyes and say, Lord, as long as you love me and as long as you got me, I'm going to come out of here all right. So the Lord said, daughter, I'm going to propel you into a new dimension with me so that you won't hurt anymore. It won't hurt you anymore because my love is going to wrap you like a blanket and I'm going to love you like you've never been loved, says the Lord. Hey, 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 Glory, 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 glory. Ebe ha ta ta ra bo to re be te le men de le ba 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 ba. You're an awesome God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to His holy name. So not only do I have those things, but I have blessing and favor. 1400 years before Jesus came God marked the children of Israel by telling them to slay a lamb and put a blood to the doorpost and wherever the blood was applied death had to pass by judgment had to pass by 
So we've been marked by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that word Passover means leap over. I never knew that till yesterday, day before yesterday. Uh, that means to leap over. Uh, that means uh, if he leaps over, I'm going to leap over. Uh, I'm going to leap over some things that keep besetting me. Uh, I'm going to leap over some things that keep wounding me. Uh, I'm going to leap over some things that keep stealing from me. Uh, I'm going to leap over uh, and to a new place in the King of Lord. You need to make up your mind that you are not going to stay where you are. That you're moving and you're propelling and going forward in the name of the Lord. <laughs> I got some cheerleaders in here that won't quit. I tell you, I don't know what I might do before I'm done. I'm telling you that right now. God said that that, that that blood would be a token. That word token means a sign. A sign is a mark. Are you hearing me? I'm on that mark thing tonight. I, I don't think I'm leaving it, but I'm trying. I'm trying to get off of it. But let me tell you one thing. Uh, uh, Pastor Bradley messed with my stuff last night, which it ain't my stuff, it's God's. So when he got finished with Ezekiel, I was so glad he left one line for me. And he told you about the six men that came with a, with a weapon in their hand to destroy the city because of the abomination. In Ezekiel chapter 9. And then he told you about the man that had the ink horn in his hand. And we also know that the man with the ink horn had to go and, uh, and put a mark on everybody's forehead that was not in, in sin. They were doing what was right. They were the intercessors. They were the prayer warriors. They were those that were interceding. Uh, but there's one thing he did not say, and I was so glad about it. God said, don't come near anyone who has the mark uh, and begin at my sanctuary. The Bible teaches us uh, that in the Old Testament, the temples were made by hand. Uh, in other words, they were buildings uh, that people could build and go in. Uh, but in the New Covenant, uh, we are the temple of the living God. Uh, and therefore, he said, the man with the ink horn uh, needs to come by and start with his sanctuary. Uh, mark us uh, and let everybody know uh, that we're standing for what is right. Uh, and we're standing for the God of heaven. Uh, and we refuse to let go and take down. Uh, we will not compromise. If he's going to start at the sanctuary, you think he's starting at the church. But he's starting right here, baby. This sanctuary. He's going to enter, look at it. He's coming in the room to check it out. He's going to make sure everything's in its proper order. He's going to make sure. Hallelujah. You are the temple of the living God. And he told the man with the ink horn, uh, start at my sanctuary. That means he's going to start with me and you, baby. And either we have his mark or we don't. Hypocrite pretending time has been long overdue. So either you're real and genuine or you're not. So if I was you, I would get on board this glory train and I would make sure that I was bearing the mark of the Lord Jesus Christ and that I was doing everything God ordained me to do and I would not leave an unfinished task. Glory to God. Praise God. Why? Oh, they're going. <laughs> All right. So, just real quick, I want to finish this little piece, okay? Can y'all wait just a few minutes? So he said, you're a chosen people, and you, you need to really embrace that. I've come to talk to them people that don't know who they are. You're forever struggling with the same old stuff. You ain't got a clue who you really are in him. 
You keep struggling with your identity. You keep struggling uh, with recognizing who you are in him. But I'm here to tell you, you have everything you need in him. Uh, glory to God. And you need to... I hear y'all study to show yourself approved. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Let me help y'all. You spend all your life, all your years serving God, studying what's wrong with you instead of studying what makes you right with Him. You know what you do wrong and you rehearse it over and over and over and every time you rehearse it you curse it so make your mind up that you're going to accept what God said about you is true that you are the blood bought the redeemed of the Lord you are his chosen one you are his beloved hallelujah make your mind up that you believe what God said and you're going to live by it chosen we're chosen we're chosen the bible says in ephesians 1 uh, 4 and 6 according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world before you was a twinkle in your mom and daddy's eye <laughs> he already called your name <laughs> he called you forth from the beginning of time <laughs> and he gave you an assignment <laughs> he gave you destiny he gave you purpose <laughs> he gave you what you needed to succeed <laughs> he said all things that pertain to life and godliness <laughs> have already been provided <laughs> so there's no lack in him <laughs> and if He's in you. There's no lack in you either because He's already provided what you need. Hallelujah. The pastor used last night John 15, 16. He said, you, You've not chosen Him, but He's chosen us, and that we should have fruit. Y'all need to check your leaves tonight because a tree to just have leaves don't have no fruit. You just got leaves on your tree. This is your leaves. When the little breeze blows, your leaves will wave a little bit. But I tell you, if you're going to bear fruit, the root has got to go down deep. And it's got to be dunged around and fertilized. And then y'all know what happens. It prunes it back so it can come out better the next time. So you can bear fruit. I used to hate to prune a grape harbor, the worst in the world. But my mama was notorious to make us do that. We had to prune them every set time in the year. You get up on a big trailer and they give you them little pruning sneer things, whatever you call them. I don't know what they even called. Shears, I guess. I, I call them, look like scissors kind of, but they were aggravating as could be. And, and they caused that tractor and that trailer to be going and you nervous about, feel like you about to fall off. You felt like you couldn't hardly hold on. And they kept dragging you on down saying, trim it, trim it, cut it back, cut it back, cut it back, cut it back. I, I didn't like it then and I wouldn't like it now. But one thing I've learned about serving God, I, I am his tree and he can prune me and cut back anytime he wants to. He knows what I don't need. He knows what would hinder my growth. And when you would cut those... Uh, when you would trim those branches back, uh, the next year they would have a greater harvest. Uh, and most of the church, uh, we don't want to be pruned. Uh, we don't want to be told that we need to let that go. Uh, but I'm here to tell you it's a pruning time. Uh, so it can be a propelling time. Uh, and that we can walk in great victory uh, in the King of glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. I'm not only a chosen generation, I'm a royal priesthood. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> and y'all understand, uh, we, don't, we don't have no trouble accepting being priest unto the Lord, but we have trouble, royal means kingly. So we're supposed to be kings and priests. You need to understand that the priests came from the lineage of Aaron of the tribe of Levi, but the kings come from the tribe of Judah. So that means not only am I supposed to bear up worship to him, but I'm supposed to be a king. A king. 
a king to the king of glory. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Uh, but it's all right. I'm going to say it anyhow. Uh, hallelujah. You need to understand. You say, well, we can't do that because that was under the... Bible. Uh, only the high priest could go in once a year. Uh, but let's flip over to the new covenant uh, and everybody can go in. Uh, everybody can serve as a priest. Uh, but let me tell you, uh, the Bible says uh, that the priesthood changed. Hebrews 7 and 1 says the priesthood changed. Revelations 5 and 10, I'll just make it a little plainer. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. That doesn't mean I'm barely getting by. That means I'm walking as a king and a priest. Uh, hallelujah. And everywhere I put the sole of my foot, uh, I take position. Uh, I take dominion. Uh, I'm an overcomer. Uh, I'm a victorious warrior. Therefore, uh, everything rightfully belongs to the blood bought, redeemed of the Lord. Uh, and that's us. Hallelujah. Okay? Some of y'all have got a clue what it is that the Lord really wants to do in your life. You've spent most of your life fighting that what the Bible really says could possibly be true about you. But tonight, the Lord wants to get to a place where they need to settle it tonight. You cannot keep going back and visiting all those broken places and all those hurt and wounded situations. And you cannot allow the world to define who you are in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Because what you used to be, the blood has covered it and you are no longer that. So you need to make your mind up that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And your soul knows that right well. Hallelujah. You may not fit the world's definition, but you fit the blood vault definition. And you need to settle it. I belong to God. And because I belong to God, God belongs to me. Forget the mistakes. Forget the stuff that went down. Let the blood cover it and say from this night I move forward and I'm not looking back no more. And even in this section right here, I'm trying to find a place to land the plane, but I can't help you right now. Some of you right through here. That's a broad way that way you don't know who I'm pointing at. <laughs> the Lord said, stop allowing fear to run and dominate your life. You're afraid of this and afraid of that and afraid of this and afraid of that. But the Lord said tonight is the night to bury that hatchet and say that he has not given me the spirit of fear but a power and love and of a sound mind. And what time I am afraid, I will trust in the Lord because I know he's my maker. I know he's my keeper. I know he's my burden bearer because I bear his mind. about y'all folks right in here still struggling with your identity still struggling to embrace what the Lord has said about you is really true it's too late in the season for you to continue wondering and worrying whether it's really real or not 
So somebody in this section right here, <laughs> tonight is going to be your night for a true settling. Huh? And you're going to say as of tonight, no longer will I question who I am. No longer will I struggle to try to please. No longer, but forever I know who I am. And I know who's I So, Tiffany, sorry, honey, I'm sorry I have to call you out, sorry, but that's how it rolls. No longer, no longer, the Lord says to look back at yesterday or the days before or the weeks before or the months before or the years before. He said, because this day I put within thee a fresh mark. This day I propel you into a new place and no longer will you have to worry and no longer will you have to fret. But I, the Lord God, have marked thee and I have called you my very own. And I say, look not back, daughter of Zion, but allow me to bring on you a fresh touch of heaven and watch my spirit begin to heal every wounded place in you. Yeah, hey, 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 hey. Some of y'all need to learn how to do this right here. You see what you do when you do that? You're making room for him to come on in and do kingdom business. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. Uh, so you're a king and a priest, uh, and therefore you set the courtrooms, uh, or the courts, uh, hallelujah, so he can come on in uh, and do exactly what he wants to do in your life. Uh, some of you tonight, uh, you have got a boundary set for God, uh, and you're only going to let God do this much. Uh, but as of tonight, uh, he said, I break down every wall. Uh, I run over every situation. Uh, and tonight... Tonight! Tonight is your freedom night. Get it a hit, ho, Simon. Get it, ho, hey, hey, hey. Ho, ho, ho. It's true. That God wants to use the young because you're strong. But don't count us old horses out of the race. Just saying. We still got some run in us. We do. And for this, this section right here, I'm trying to drive it home tonight who you really are in Christ. I'm trying to help you to understand what your mama said, what your daddy said, what Aunt Sally and Uncle John said, and what your enemies have said, and what the church has said. It does not identify who you are in Christ. So you first of all got to forgive them for what they said, and then you need to ask the Lord to forgive you for holding that spirit of offense. Because as long as you carry offense, the Lord can't heal you and he can't deliver you. But you got to choose. I let it go. I'm going to 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 let it go. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says we're a holy nation. <laughs> Paul says, Ephesians 2 and 10, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. I had a two-minute clip, went, spot, went viral. Wasn't he trying to get nothing to go viral. I was talking about keto. Anybody knows I've been on a year's journey with keto. I've lost 103 pounds. I'm talking about keto and the woman 
takes a phone and sticks it in my face and says, give the people a word. How do you go from keto to give the people a word? I'll tell you how you do it. If he lives in you. You ain't got to work it up. You ain't got to stir it up. You just got to let it come up. Hallelujah. So that's what happened. Uh, and because uh, of the, what's going on in our earth, earth uh, and I made a statement. Uh, it's not a skin problem. It's a sin problem. Um, I made another statement. You better check your love thermometer. Because uh, the Bible says, how can you love the one you have not seen? Uh, and you don't love the brother that you do see. Uh, so it went viral. Praise God. I wasn't trying to go viral, but that's what come out. And what, I, what, what the Lord said to me, he said, I blowed on that thing. He said, it was my suddenly. And my wind is carrying it across the nation. Because somebody's got to be big enough, bad enough, bold enough to tell the real truth. Hallelujah. We all belong to him. Hallelujah. And skin has nothing to do with the blood bought church of the living God. I'm going to try to I'm gonna try to taxi. You're his workmanship. That's the same word in the Greek as, as poem. Y'all got that? So that means you're his artistry. He's carefully crafted us and constructed us with each verb and each adjective and adverb and noun and preposition <laughs> to achieve a desired goal. Hallelujah. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, God has and is carefully crafting uh, and constructing us through various events, teachings, and even trials for the purpose of producing good works for His glory. So I want to tell you tonight, God chose us uh, to display His beautiful artwork. Some of us is fat and some of us is skinny. Uh, some of us is tall and some of us is short. Uh, some of us look pretty good and some of us look a little rough. Uh, but he loved us all uh, and he put us on display. Uh, he handpicked every one of us uh, to be kings uh, and priests under the God of heaven. So in my trying to close oh, thank you I get close five times all right that's great I know y'all didn't think I really was going to skip this section did you you really didn't think that did you okay well I need to tell somebody in this section that so long you've wanted somebody's approval of you you want somebody to sanction and say, listen, you're special and you're this or you're that. And all your life, you've never been able to find that. But God said tonight, I'm telling you, you are crafted by my hand. You are a designer original, and you are my masterpiece, and I'm going to use you to bring great glory. So he says, forget the hurts, forget the wounding, forget the disappointments, and say, praise God, I'm going to rise above this thing, and I'm going to be everything God designed me to be. Hallelujah. Don't look back at tomorrow. Don't look back at the, all the things you've been through, but say, don't look back at yesterday. Today, uh, but look forward for whatever God's got coming down your way uh, and make your mind up uh, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. A masterpiece. I am your masterpiece. And you have put us on display. You have crafted us with the finger of your love. Thank you, Lord. 
thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. We are your masterpiece, your artistic design. You picked us for this time. <laughs> oh, to give you glory. So in my closing tonight, and I'm nowhere near finished, I'm just stopping. But every pastor that's in the room, would you just stand where you are for a moment? Every pastor. Every pastor. It don't matter if you're the lead pastor, the support pastor. It don't matter what position that is, but you're pastor. All right? Are you all with me? Uh, Haley, you have to stand, honey. You're married to the pastor. I love you, though. I right, just say, everybody, Pastor Tim. Amen. So I want to simply do a simple thing. It might not mean much to you, but I'm doing a simple thing. When you go back to where you come from, The assignment that you had is now shifting to a new assignment. It don't mean that the Lord is throwing you out of that position. It just means he's giving you a new revelation and a new dimension of authority and power to walk in. So you need to understand that where people have been hard-headed and stubborn and rebellious and would not cooperate, the Lord is going to bring a new spirit of unity in that place. And you're going to begin to see the power of God as it begins to unfold. It is your season to be mighty and powerful and to stand flat-footed and say, we we have come to uproot and to replant. It's a new season and a new mantle of anointing. Don't be afraid what I'm going to do. For I do it in you. I do it in you. I do it in you. So, Father, I bless every pastor and their companion in this house right now. And I speak life and joy and peace and victory to their labor of love and the ministry that they're endeavoring to do for you. Father God, we thank you right now that you bring it in divine alignment. And Lord, they walk in a divine assignment. And Lord, that they fulfill the commission that you have laid on their life. Oh God, we thank you right now that they will not be afraid to stand and decree and declare what thus saith the Lord in this hour and in this season. And we release them now with a fresh move. Hallelujah. You may be seated. That's all I want to do. Something simple. If you're here tonight and you've been struggling with settling in yourself, first of all, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that's my first assignment. If you're backslidden, you're cold, you're indifferent, Tonight's a good night to move on to the front right now. Are you here? Would you be honest and say, I've not, I've been in a place, but I need to get up, get out. Would you be honest? Would you move from those seats? It'll be on you because I gave you the chance. It'll be on you. <clears throat> She's not the only one that needs to come. There's others in this room that need to stand with her. There's others in this room that need to make your way to the front. There's others in this room that need to say, I need God to help me. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm waiting on you right now. Hallelujah. I'm waiting on you. Jesus is waiting on you.
andre besho Can you get her to move this way, baby? Can you get her to move this way? Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, baby. I appreciate that. Yeah, well, y'all just slide a little closer right here. I need somebody to stand behind every one of these. Somebody that's a prayer warrior knows how to get a prayer through. Because we can't afford to let them go back to the seats the same way they come up here. We're on assignment tonight, amen. Uh, and we know that God has a plan for every one of them up and around this altar, amen. Uh, so lay hands on them and lead them. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we break every yoke and every shackle. Uh, God, that has bound these, your people. Uh, God, we take authority over it right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, every distraction, every deception, uh, everything that has blinded them from your purpose and your plan. Uh, Father God, clear their mind uh, that the eyes of their understanding may be enlightened, Lord, uh, that they might see clearly your purpose for them in this earth. Uh, Father God, we thank you now. Uh, Come on, lead them, lead them, lead them. Help them, help them, help them. Don't let them go back the same way they came. You gotta open your own mouth. You gotta talk to the Lord for yourself. We can't do it for you. You need to ask the Lord. Uh, oh God, come in my heart and cleanse me from everything. Uh, oh God, take those things, uh, break those yokes off of my mind, uh, off of my emotions. Uh, set me free of everything not like you. Uh, help me to let go. Help me to let go. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, don't let them go. Don't let them go. Don't let them go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Let's believe God for these. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, baby, praise him. Come on, baby, praise him. Come on, baby, praise him. Hallelujah. Let the praise of God ring out of your bosom. Come on, praise him. Thank him for his grace. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him for his love. Thank him. Yeah, hey, 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 hey. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> Come on, just pray and celebrate with them as the Lord delivers them. Amen. He's going to deliver them. the name 
name of Jesus is lifted high, lifted high, lifted high. The name of Jesus is lifted high. In this place, the name of Jesus is lifted high, lifted high, lifted high. The name of Jesus is lifted high in this place. The name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Jesus is lifted high, lifted high, lifted high. The name of Jesus is lifted high in this place. The name, the name of Jesus. Jesus is lifted high, lifted high, lifted high. The name of Jesus is lifted high in this place. The name of Jesus is high, lift it high, lift it high, the name of Jesus is lifted high, in this place, no other name but the name of Jesus, no other name but the name of Jesus, no other name but the name of Jesus. We lift your name up, we lift your name up. No other name but the name of Jesus. No other name but the name of Jesus. No other name but the name of Jesus. We lift your name up, we lift your name. The name of Jesus is lifted high. Lift it high, lift it high. The name of Jesus is lifted high. Say in this place. Come on, let's celebrate God. Celebrate Him like He's a good, good God. We've been marred. We've been marked. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We celebrate God. Hallelujah. 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 You can be seated. You can be seated all over this house. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cut that live stream. Cut the live stream. Amen. Hallelujah. 